Best Livestock Animals for Backyard Farming Backyard livestock farming means pigs, ducks, chickens, and other animals are kept in a very small area of land which makes livestock easier to manage. Raising livestock animals humanely can use less feed, fuel, and water compared to intensive farming. Before you can raising backyard livestock animals, first research the local zoning laws and ordinances for the city. Also, consider some important points like How many animals are you allowed? What kind of livestock is permitted? What are the facility requirements and proper care of livestock animals? Domestic water buffaloes are known to have about 74 breeds numbering some 165 million animals, but today only a few wild water buffaloes remain. Domesticated water buffalo's longevity can be around 30 years and most living around 25 years. The water buffalo is a social animal which like living in herds of mostly mixed genders. They are herbivores which means they only eat vegetables. Grass and herbs are their favorite wild food and will not eat aquatic plants. Some buffaloes such as the Asian and African buffalo when there's no grass or herbs available can even eat trees and shrubs. Water buffalo cannot effectively dissipate heat thus it needs water to cool itself down, which makes them highly dependent on freshwater sources such as rivers and dams. This is why they are called water buffaloes. You too can raise big, healthy, profit-paying water buffaloes, if you will merely meet certain clearly defined water buffalo requirements. If you do this, and it's easy, you need never worry about profits, you are sure to succeed. The Benefits of Raising Water Buffalo Water buffaloes may not be a commonly raised livestock amongst farmers but they can be easily raised by anyone anywhere in the world. They are also resistant to diseases, thus you don't need to spend a lot on vets. Buffalo milk is a unique kind of milk that has an in-demand market with not a lot of farmers supplying. The milk is ideal for making butter, soft cheeses and yogurt. Buffalo meat tastes a lot better than beef. It also contains half of the cholesterol and one quarter the amount of fat making it much healthier as well. It is very expensive thus making it a profitable business industry. If you want to produce high quality leather then look no further than that of buffalo leather. Their hides make some of the toughest leather around which sells for a high price. Due to their placid natures and intelligence they can be used as working oxen and again can be easily trained to ride. With just a few exceptions, they are easy going and thrive on attention. Although they may look larger than cattle buffaloes consume a fraction of the feed required to raise cows and can thrive on marginal pasture. This means you can save quite a lot of money from buying feeds. As you see there are lots of benefits as to why one would want to raise their own water buffaloes. When done right water buffalo farming can be very rewarding and can bring some good profits as well. Even if your farm is less than 10 acres, you can raise a couple of beef cows to feed your family throughout the year. If you've ever listened or watched one of the news reports about antibiotics used in meat production or yet another food recall, you've probably cringed and thought, there is something seriously wrong with our food system. When substances used to grow our food cause potential harm to the livestock and to ourselves, there certainly appears to be a problem. Raising a couple cattle can feed your family and then some for the year. You don't even need a lot of land to do it. As a rule of thumb, you can keep one cow-calf pair per every two acres of pasture for 12 months. Prepare fencing before cows arrive. One of the most important things you'll need in place before raising cattle, no matter the size of the herd, is good fencing. If there's a hole in your fence, a cow will find it. There are three main fencing options for cattle. 1. Barbed wire fencing. Barbed wire is best if you're fencing acreage. You'll want to have at least three strands, though four is best. The bottom strand needs to be low to the ground, as cattle can do a mean belly crawl, and the top strand needs to be close to four feet tall, as cattle are surprisingly agile and can jump quite high when they want. Another excellent item is for your fencing or metal wire stays. These keep your cows from pushing their way through the fence. Remember, they're like a mouse. If they can get their head through it, their body will follow. 2. Electric fencing. Electric fencing is another good option. But this will require electricity, whether obtained from the grid or solar panels. When using electric fencing you need to have good ground, and in dry areas or during droughts, this can be more difficult. 
be aware that as brush and vegetation grow, they may fall or push on the wire, causing it to short out. Electric fencing is often better suited for smaller pens or pasture areas. 3. Wooden Fencing I have to confess, there is little else more charming than a weathered wooden fence. However, if you're fencing acreage or large paddocks, wood becomes expensive fast. Here in the Pacific Northwest, wood also rots rather quickly, though cedar is often a good wood of choice because it holds up longer. Fence Posts your choice of fence posts will range from metal T-posts to wooden ones. We use railroad ties or cedar posts for all of our corner posts, gates and his middle section during long stretches of fencing. Remember, unless you're in free-range country, if your cattle get out, you're responsible for any damage they incur, so good fencing is important. Choosing your cattle. Cattle are herd animals and find safety in numbers. If at all possible, you'll have better luck raising a pair than a single cow, and you can keep one of the cows as your breeding stock. You'll hear a lot of opinions about which cattle breed produces the best tasting meat. While some breeds produce larger steaks or grow more quickly than others, in our experience we've found the flavor of your beef comes from what you feed your cow and how it's handled during and after butchering. We've raised Black Angus, Red Angus and Hereford. We prefer a Black Angus and Hereford cross, as the Angus tend to be larger than our Herefords and produce a slightly larger finished animal. You can purchase cattle at auction, but we prefer buying from local breeders so we can see the cattle's condition, observe the rest of the herd and ask the breeder questions. Water for your cattle. Your cattle will need access to clean water. This is even more important than feed. If you don't have a natural water source, like a pond or creek, on your property, you'll want to use a large water trough. Instead of purchasing a conventional trough, we use an old cast iron bathtub. Keep an eye out for people doing a remodel, and you can get older tub for free. Locate your water or close to your water source. Miles of hose isn't fun and can be tough to manage during the freezing temperatures of winter. Cattle feed options. Ideally, your land will produce enough grass to feed your cattle for the majority of the year, but most people will have to feed hay during the winter months when grass goes dormant. Seed your pasture with different varieties of grass to help stretch your pasture further into the year. We've been looking into triticoline, a cold weather grass originating from Russia. If you only have one or two cows, you'll most likely feed square hay bales during the colder months. Controlling brush and weeds with mowing and chopping off blossoms before they go to seed. Our haylage is purchased from local farmers who don't use spray either. It's possible to raise beef on a small scale, though some thought and planning does go into the process. We love knowing exactly what goes into our beef, and the finished product is not only one we can be proud of, but is nourishing to our family. How to raise horses. If you possess the triangle, enough land, enough time, enough energy, you can feel the joy of raising your horses at your property. The emotional bonds developed after some time between humans and horses are unparalleled. Horse is a highly intelligent and emotional animal that will change your life. Interacting with horses is one of the most stress-relieving activities. However, you have to be fully prepared and consider the financial issue along with the commitment needed. If you decide to raise horses at your property, horses or any other livestock cannot be left unattended for over a day. Raising horses means caring, watching, cleaning, feeding and troubleshooting 365 days a year. Thus, if you consider leaving let's say for a weekend, you must find an experienced and reliable farm sitter to take care of your horses. Furthermore, if you possess horses of special needs and or if your field cannot produce enough pasture most of the year, you will have to spend $400 minus $500 per month for feeding each horse. To this, you have to add of course the cost of purchasing the horses. There are various adoption programs though, veterinary costs, normal and emergency, various horse equipment along with the costs associated with building and maintaining a decent and legitimate horse property. The average lifespan of a domesticated horse is 30 years. The average horse reaches its reproductive period at the age of 5. Before that age, the horse shall not be ridden, because its skeleton and bones are not fully developed. Racehorses are usually ridden at 1 to 1, 5 years old, and that's why they are usually retired by the age of 6. Some of them are permanently lamed and many others have to be euthanized, put to sleep, by the age of three. Since you expect a long-term relationship with your horses, you have to respect them and let them live their lives with dignity. 
Sheep are among the most efficient of all the domestic animals and have been for thousands of years. Different from cattle and swine, sheep are adapted to the most extreme environmental conditions. Sheep are very agile and graze easily in the most rugged of mountain terrain, where cattle choose not to feed. Furthermore, some sheep breeds are well suited to survive on sparse desert range that would not be used otherwise. Thus, sheep have the ability to convert the natural forage of these extreme habitats into protein for human uses. We use the proteins produced by sheep in the form of wool and lamb. Sheep can use practically all types of forage, including crop residue and even ditch banks. An abundance of forage is one key to profitable sheep production. The successful producer also must have a genuine interest in business, management skills, and labor to care for the sheep. Some Advantages of Producing Sheep Sheep are easy to handle and generally require little input. Sheep production does not require elaborate facilities and equipment. Sheep consume roughage as their primary feed. Sheep help control weeds. Sheep provide two sources of cash income, lamb and wool. Sheep require a minimum amount of supplemental feeding. Sheep can provide a quick return on investment. A sheep enterprise must be well managed. Sheep are subject to predation by coyotes, eagles, bobcats, lions, bears, domestic dogs, etc. Sheep require better fencing than do cattle. Internal parasites can create health problems when sheep are intensively grazed on irrigated pastures. The ewes on pastures are crop residue. Flush the ewes from three weeks before until three weeks after introducing the rams. The flushed ewes, if properly conditioned and bred for spring lambing, should have the potential to Produce lamb crops of 140 to 160 percent. The management alternatives for this type of a production system are numerous. If spring pasture or feed is not available, or if facilities are not available to lamb the ewes, there may be a demand for bred ewes in the spring or for ewes with young lambs. If pasture is not available for the ewes after lambing, the lambs can be weaned early for feeding in a dry lot, and the ewes can be sold. A seasonal use program is a good way to market farm produced roughages and keep labor busy in the off-season. The biggest objection to bringing range-raised sheep onto a farm is that they often are wild and sometimes difficult to manage. If there is an abundance of winter pasture and crop residue, pasturing feeder lambs can be profitable. This is more speculative than other seasonal use programs because market values can change, with potentially devastating results. Goat farming involves raising goats for multiple purposes, such as meat, milk, and fiber. They are known to be versatile animals that require minimal space and maintenance while providing numerous benefits. Today, they are bred worldwide due to their adaptability and easy management. Furthermore, goats have a high reproductive rate, meaning they can produce several kids yearly, increasing farmers' profits. Let's check out goat farming advantages below. Goat farms types. There are several types of goat farms, each with its unique purpose and management techniques. One common type is a dairy goat farm, where goats are raised primarily for milk. These farms typically have high-yielding breeds of goats that require specialized milking equipment and strict hygiene practices. Another type of goat farm is a meat goat farm, which raises goats for consumption. Meat goat breeds include boar and kiko goats, among others. These farms usually require less specialized equipment but adequate pasture space to allow the animals to graze freely. Fiber goat farming involves raising specific breeds, such as angora or cashmere goats, for wool or mohair fiber production. These animals require regular shearing and special care to maintain the quality of their fibers. Goat farming advantages. Minimal space is required. Unlike other livestock animals, such as cows or horses, goats don't need much land to roam around on. You can raise several goats in a relatively small area. This makes goat farming an ideal option for those living in urban areas or with limited space. It's possible to keep goats in your backyard or rooftop. Goats can thrive anywhere if they have access to fresh water and food. Another benefit of raising goats in a small space is that monitoring their health and behavior is easier. You'll be able to keep track of each animal more easily than if they were spread out across a large pasture. Feeding needs are less. 
goats can survive on various feed options, including grasses, hay, and weeds. Goats have a unique digestive system that efficiently extracts nutrients from low-quality forage. They require less food than cows or sheep per body weight. You'll need fewer resources to keep your goats healthy and productive. Feeding costs take up a considerable portion of any farmer's budget, but it doesn't have to be this way with goat farming. Goats prefer browsing over grazing. Therefore, they don't require expensive feeds like grain or soybeans. Goat farming requires significantly less feed than other livestock types while remaining productive and profitable, making it an excellent choice for small-scale farmers looking for ways to reduce costs while maximizing profits through sustainable practices. Multi-purpose usage. Goats can provide farmers with various products like meat, milk, and fiber. Goat meat is becoming popular due to its lean composition and unique taste. Also, it is high in protein and low in fat compared to other meats. In addition to meat production, goats produce milk for human consumption or transform it into cheese and yogurt. In case you missed it, innovative housing and shelter designs for profitable goat farming. This milk is easier to digest than cow's milk because it has smaller fat globules, making it easier on sensitive stomachs. Another valuable product from goats is fiber. Mohair and cashmere fibers are obtained from certain breeds of goats like angoras or cashmeres, respectively. These fibers are highly demanded in the fashion industry and are used for clothing items like sweaters and scarves. Low maintenance. Goats are easy to care for and don't require much attention or resources. Goats can graze on various vegetation, making them less picky eaters than other livestock. This means they can survive where other animals struggle to find enough food. Additionally, goats have strong immune systems, making them less susceptible to diseases and illnesses than other livestock. As long as the goat's basic needs, such as shelter from extreme weather conditions and clean water, are met, they can thrive with minimal intervention from farmers. Faster growth. Goats have a faster growth rate compared to other livestock animals. This means your investment in raising goats can be returned much quicker than if you were raising cows or pigs. Goats typically reach maturity at 12 to 18 months, depending on the breed and gender. Female goats, also known as does, can give birth to multiple kids per year, allowing for even faster herd expansion. Easy to train and handle. Goats are known for their docile nature, making them ideal for those new to farming. Goats can be quickly trained to follow specific routines, such as coming in at night or going out to pasture during the day. Unlike animals requiring electric fences or complicated housing systems, goats can be confined with simple fencing structures. High prolificacy. Goats can breed yearly, resulting in more offspring per breeding cycle. This makes it possible for farmers to increase their herd size quickly and efficiently. They're inexpensive to keep. Goats require less space and feed. This means that even small-scale farmers can engage in goat farming. Goats are mainly known for their ability to survive on various vegetation and thrive in harsh conditions where other animals would struggle. They have high resistance to diseases and parasites, making it easy for farmers to rear them with minimum veterinary costs. Furthermore, goats do not require expensive housing structures like other livestock do. A simple shed or shelter will protect them from extreme weather conditions or predators at night. Goats grow faster. Goats reach maturity much faster and are ready for breeding at around six months old. This means that farmers can turn a profit on their investment in a short time. Goats can be sold for meat or milk, which is highly valued in many cultures. Easily marketable. One of the great advantages of goat farming is that it's an easily marketable venture. Different products can be derived from goats, such as meat, milk, and fiber. This means there are various markets for goat farmers to sell their products. The versatility of goats as a commodity makes them an attractive investment for farmers looking to enter this industry. Whether you're selling their meat or utilizing their milk or fibers there will always be a demand for your product. In case you missed it, goat breeding and genetics for improved productivity and disease resistance. The many advantages of pigs. Today's domesticated pig has most of the qualities that the modern farmer looks for in livestock. About 36% of meat eaten by humans annually is pork, followed by poultry, 35%, and cattle and buffalo, 22%. Lamb and mutton come in at a distant 4, 
Many factors affect these trends. They include religious beliefs, environmental conditions, pricing and the growth of the human population. Livestock producers continually strive to breed the ultimate animal, one that grows faster and converts food to meat better, carries more meat in valuable areas of the carcass, and has a better temperament for ease of handling. In many respects, pigs are ideal in this regard. They have fast growth rates and good feed to meat conversion ratios, are relatively easy to raise, and do not require much space, have prolific breeding potential, and are docile. These factors not only lead to increased profitability but will surely assist in meeting the growing demand for meat in future. Pork consumption is likely to increase even more due to lower production costs. More about pigs. Pigs, which belong to the genus Seuss, are very intelligent animals. There are 16 species, including warthogs and wild boars. Pigs interbreed quite easily and domesticated pigs will breed with wild pigs if allowed to. Domesticated pigs vary according to breed, and some breeds have been line bred to produce more lean meat than others. There are hundreds of breeds of domesticated pigs, with about 25 being popular with commercial farmers. It is possible to choose a specific breed or certain outcrosses to satisfy a particular market. For example, very fat pigs may not be useful for the production of belly or streaky bacon, as the bacon will have more fat than meat. Pigs are highly sociable and communicate with one another via grunts of different pitch and duration. Pigs in the wild live in groups called sounders, usually made up of one male with a number of sows. Some sounders have been known to include 300 members. Males chased away by dominant boars often leave to form their own sounder in another location. Pigs are remarkably clean and will often reserve an area in a sty solely for defecation. Prolific breeders. Pigs usually breed twice a year, and produce about 12 piglets in a litter. These weigh about 1, 1 kilogram at birth and, unlike any other livestock, may double their weight in the first week of life if they obtain sufficient milk from the sow. Piglets can be weaned at 2 to 4 weeks and can be slaughtered as weaners at 2 to 3 months old. Other categories include porkers slaughtered at 4 months, baconers at 8 months, and sausage pigs, elderly animals that are culled. Comparing pig growth rates and offspring numbers to those of cattle and sheep, it is easy to see why pig farming can accelerate profitability if undertaken properly in a humane, clean, and stress-free environment. This is not only the correct thing to do, a lack of such farming practices can lead to great financial loss due to disease and stress-related problems. 10 Reasons to Start Raising Rabbits Rabbits have the potential to be one of the more profitable species to raise. Discover our 10 reasons why you should start raising rabbits. Rabbits or Ectologus cuniculus are small-sized animals, micro-livestock, with long legs that they use to hop around. Rabbits are referred to as pseudo-ruminant, because they eat a lot of plant stuff and roughage but do not regurgitate like ruminants. They are often used in laboratories for research purposes, testing new medical products, nutritional studies and etc., they are mostly preferred due to the fact they are small and do not require a large space. When rabbits are well fed, they mature early and become ready for production by the age of 6 to 7 months. Rabbit manure can also be used as fertilizer for flowering plants and trees, as they are rich in nitrogen, potassium and phosphorus. In addition, the manure is dry and does not give off any unpleasant smell, odorless. However, this only depends on how they were cared for and managed. What is the proper way to handle a rabbit? Rabbits are very sensitive micro livestock and should be carefully handled according to their sizes. That is why it is important to follow a standard procedure on how to catch, handle them. This is done to ensure that you do not cause any injury to the small vessels or cartilage in the ear nor by the nape of the neck. Therefore, to ensure that none of those areas are damaged, slowly walk towards the rabbit while talking to it. This avoids the rabbit from being frightened. Reach out one your hand and place it under the belly and chest. Place the second hand behind the rabbit and lift it up. Advantages of raising rabbits. Prolific business. They are quite. They produce great compost. Have rapid growth rate. They are cheap to farm. They eat a wide variety of plants. Less labor required and cost involved. No religious taboos about consuming rabbit meat. Highly reproductive. Litters are large and with a short gestation period. 
produces highly nutritious meat with low fat and cholesterol and it's very digestible to all age type. Rabbits have the potential to be one of the more profitable species to raise. They do not require large amounts of space compared with most other livestock species, and they are generally non-demanding animals even if they are very susceptible to disease. Why become a beekeeper? Beekeeping is steadily gaining interest, and this gratifying hobby offers plenty of benefits that extend beyond honey. Many beekeepers enjoy the personal connection to nature and living things, while others appreciate being part of the beekeeping community. Your garden and neighborhood plants benefit, too. The bees from your hive will be hard at work foraging and pollinating plants within at least a two-mile radius. Explore these seven benefits of becoming a beekeeper. 1. There's always something exciting happening in the hive. Beekeepers are constantly learning. Flight patterns, comb building habits, bee communication, bee lining, and brood rearing are just some of the many fascinating topics you'll learn about through keeping bees. A colony is a living organism, with every bee from the newest worker to the all-important queen operating together in harmony. Even in winter, you can listen for the gentle hum inside the hive that lets you know they're active. You'll learn from observing your bees at work, and learn year-round through virtual or in-person classes and beekeeping books. There's no end to what you'll find as you raise these fascinating flyers. 2. Just about anyone can keep bees. People of all ages can enjoy beekeeping, and it's accessible to almost anyone who is willing to put in the time and effort. Years ago, beekeepers had to learn carpentry just to build their own hive. Now, you can buy complete beekeeping kits, and beekeeping supplies can usually be had on demand from your equipment supplier. Beekeeping isn't limited by location. You can plan an apiary based on your available space whether you live in a rural, suburban, or urban setting. There are accessibility options for those with mobility issues, too. Some hives and equipment are specially designed for wheelchair accessibility, and you can alter existing hives to suit your needs. The beekeeping community offers abundant support and resources, and reaching out puts you on the path to success. 3. Be part of an active beekeeping community. When you become a beekeeper, you can learn from others who enjoy bees as much as you do. Your fellow beekeepers possess a wealth of information. Look to them as you learn about honeybee care. Connect with the beekeeping community through social media. Find your nearest beekeeping club or association, or ask nearby beekeepers if they'll serve as your local mentor. Beekeeping associations and clubs often have loaner honey extractors and other equipment available for members to borrow when starting their new hobby. Pollinators like honeybees are beneficial, but their future is uncertain. Honeybee and wild bee populations have faced serious challenges and threats in recent years, so keeping bees can give you a way to ensure the presence of pollinators for future generations. As part of the beekeeper community, you can spread the word about how important bees are to all of our lives. Start a neighborhood bee club, encourage discussion about pollinator health, and invite people to observe the beekeeping process. You may even inspire others to take up the hobby. 4. Beekeeping helps you become a better gardener. The benefits of apiculture extend to local agriculture. Aside from their master pollination skills, bees are fantastic teachers. As a beekeeper, many of the lessons you learn about honeybee care apply to plants as well. Beekeepers must pay close attention to the weather conditions and make hive adjustments, which can also translate to improving weather-related care for crops. Beekeeping also teaches you about the basic process of cross-pollination, how to identify beneficial and unfriendly insects, and proper pesticide use, which will also help you manage the health of your garden. Plugging into the worlds of beekeeping and gardening at the same time will keep you totally in tune with the natural world around you. 5. Urban beekeeping impacts the neighborhood ecosystem. No longer limited to rural areas, urban beekeeping is more popular than ever. Urban beekeepers are setting up hives in residential and city areas that once seemed inhospitable to honeybees. Because of the high flower biodiversity in a city location, with some considerations for bee and human safety urban bees often thrive. Urban beekeeping brings nature closer, so you can enjoy a little bit of serenity in the middle of busy city life. Urban beekeeping is a hobby that only requires a small footprint. Rooftops are popular for city beehives. Your bees can improve the neighborhood's ecosystem as they pollinate plants in parks and gardens, which promotes fruiting and seed production. Community garden members may even provide space for hives because they'll reap benefits, too. 6. Harvest beeswax and other products of the hive. 
Though most people think first about honey from the hive, beeswax is valuable as well. Wax is the natural material used by young worker bees when building honeycomb. Once rendered, melted and filtered, beeswax can be used to produce natural products for use at home, to give as gifts, or to include on your sales table. Make lotions, lip balms, soap, and other skincare products. You can DIY your own beeswax products for the home, including wax food wraps and wood furniture polish or cutting board conditioner. Craft beeswax candles in a variety of shapes and styles, from simple taper and votive candles to detailed molded candle designs that look hand-carved. Because it contains few skin irritants but a few antimicrobial compounds, beeswax is a favorite ingredient in beauty products, especially for people with sensitive skin. 7. The most popular benefit of keeping bees, the honey. Last but not least, beekeeping yields the most delicious reward, raw honey, straight from your own hives. It takes patience and dedication to your colony to get it, but the result is worth the effort. Add it to your tea or toast, use it in place of sugar, or eat it straight from the comb. No matter how you prefer it, honey is a favorite natural sweetener. If you collect a large amount of honey, don't worry, it never expires. Once it's jarred, keep it tightly sealed, tucked away in a cool place out of direct sunlight and it'll be ready when you need it. There's a high demand for honey. The U.S. consumes much more honey than it can produce. Honey and honey products are always popular at the farmer's market. Sell the honey and beeswax products you produce to the people in your community who prefer to buy from local vendors. Package and store your product in our honey bottles or cut comb honey containers, and include pre-printed and custom labels for your honey containers so customers know where to get more. Once you establish your first beehive, you'll be hooked on beekeeping and the related benefits. Tilapia fish farming is very common throughout the world. It is a very profitable business. However, there are many advantages of starting tilapia fish farming. Here we are trying to describe the top advantages of this business. 1. The main advantage of tilapia fish farming is the easy process of this business. Raising this fish is very easy. 2. Tilapia fish has very good demand in both domestic and international markets. 3. Tilapia fish can adapt themselves to a wide variety of climatic conditions. You can start raising some tilapia, even in your unused backyard small pond. 4. Tilapia fishes grows very fast. It is also another reason many people are growing this fish. 5. In the year 2002, tilapia was the fourth most consumed fish in the United States. And currently, it has become the third most important fish in aquaculture. 6. Tilapia fish is very nutritious and tasty. 7. You don't have to worry about marketing tilapia fish, because this fish has very good demand in the market. 8. Commercial tilapia fish farming is very profitable, and you can start either commercial or small-scale production. Commercial tilapia fish farming can be a good business for unemployed educated people. 9. Tilapia fingerlings, feeds and all other required things and facilities are available throughout the world. So, you will not face any problems if you start this business. 10. Consuming tilapia fish has many health benefits, and you can enjoy fresh tilapia if you start growing it on your own. 10 Reasons You Should Raise Quail Do you dream about raising birds, but you can't raise chickens in your urban area? Or maybe you do raise chickens, but you're looking for something different. If you want to raise birds that lay delicious eggs and have meat that is considered a delicacy, then you need to think about raising quail. Here are 10 reasons that you should be raising quail. 1. Space requirements. Quail are considerably smaller than chickens, ducks, geese or turkeys. Their smaller size means that they also require less space than some of the larger poultry birds. Quail need about one square foot of space per bird. 2. Eggs. Quail hens lay daily, just like chickens. The eggs are smaller, but are rich in nutrients. Many bakers prefer to use quail eggs over chicken eggs if they can get them. 3. Processing One of the reasons many people raise quail is for meat. Quail are smaller and easier to process than chickens or turkeys. They also don't have to be plucked. If you've ever processed your own birds, you'll know how time-consuming plucking can be. 4. They aren't livestock Many cities don't allow chickens because they are considered livestock. Most cities do not include quail as livestock. Check with your local ordinances and make sure, 
but you will probably be surprised to know that you can keep quail. 5. Feed Costs Since quail are smaller, they don't require as much feed as chickens, ducks, and turkeys. Less feed means lower feed costs for you. 6. They won't disturb your neighbors. One of the reasons that chickens are not usually allowed in cities is because they tend to disturb neighbors that don't keep chickens. Roosters tend to crow early in the morning and while that is a pleasant sound for some of us, it can be disturbing to neighbors. Thankfully, quail are quiet. There is no crowing early in the morning. Quail only chirp and coo quietly. You also won't have to worry about your free-range quail pooping on your neighbor's stuff. Quail are excellent flyers and must be caged at all times. 7. Faster maturing. Quail mature rapidly. You'll be able to tell the difference between males and females when they are about 3 weeks old. Quail hens will start laying as early as 6 to 8 weeks of age. If you're planning on harvesting them, you'll be able to do that when they are 6 to 8 weeks old. 8. Hardy. When provided with a clean environment and proper food, water, quail are very hardy and don't get sick often. 9. Profitable. There are several ways that you can make money easily with quail. Bakers will often pay top dollar to have quail eggs to bake with. You can also sell the meat at a good price since the birds are considered a delicacy. Quail chicks fetch a higher price than chickens do. If you're incubating eggs, you can expect to get as much as $5 minus 7 per quail chick. 10. Delicacy. Quail meat is considered a delicacy. The lean white meat has a rich flavor that is succulent and juicy. Many high-end restaurants serve quail. If you raise quail at home, you'll be able to enjoy a delicious meal that was raised in your backyard. Why you should consider raising turkeys. Turkeys are beautiful birds. Work hard to keep your farm pest free and make a great roast. Turkeys have a bit of reputation as being difficult to breed, constantly succumbing to disease, and a real bugger to cook. But none of that is true. They're a pretty easy care bird. While there are more color variations in their native homeland of the woodlands of the USA, NZ has bronze, white, buff and royal palm turkeys, and the broad-breasted white, the turkey equivalent of the cob meat chicken. They have real personality, they're really neat to watch. Being white with a bright red head and bluish sort of face, they are very striking. Breeding. Turkey hens start laying in spring in their second year, laying clutches of eggs, then going broody and sitting on them. But fertile eggs can go under broody bantams or larger hens too, with hatching taking place 28 days later. If you're more interested in buying day-old poults, it's best to either talk to a breeder and arrange things ahead of time, or if you want meat birds, get day-old poults, of the broad-breasted white only, from a commercial company. A house and a run is good. Our houses were maybe 2 meters by 4 meters, and then a run off the front, 6M, with deer fencing. A good run will also offer protection from predators like hawks, dogs, cats, rats and hedgehogs. Andrea keeps her poults in a run with their mother, or adopted mother, until they are feathered up, usually at around the 6-8 to eight week mark. Once released to roam the farm, they are fed on grains, cooked barley, in winter, veg scraps and get to graze free range on the Gollins 10-acre block. We like them to be free to forage, they get fed twice a day on mixed grains, but then they're free to eat grass and insects. They're excellent grazers, they move like a mob of sheep, but they hunt down bugs too, they're actually rather loud when they find some. They scratch, but not like chickens do, not as aggressively. Keeping control of predators is important, especially rats and hedgehogs. Another advantage of penning up turkey poults is to give them an idea of where their home range is, as being woodland birds they do like to wander over a wide area. Despite their weight and any obvious signs of aerodynamics, most adult turkeys can fly except for the heavy toms, male turkeys, so you may choose to clip the primary wing feathers. It tastes like chicken. We eat roosters when they're 8 to 10 months old and it's like that. It's a stronger tasting meat, mostly to do with age and they are running around more than a caged bird. It's tougher so we just prepare the meat differently. I like turkey meat, that's really what it comes down to. Turkeys are killed and processed in exactly the same manner as chickens, except the Gollins don't have anything big enough to scald them in so they just dry pluck them. The Gollins process birds for roasting and stewing. Raising ducks in your backyard gives you eggs, ducklings and entertainment. What animal is hardier, lays more eggs, has a longer, more productive life, 
and is funnier and more charming than the popular backyard chicken. A duck, of course. They are also messier, more willful and require a different management style. But almost anyone who has ever been owned by a duck will agree that they are worth it. Ducks are practical. When you think of a duck, you may imagine an all-white waddler begging for bread scraps at the local pond. It's hard to imagine such an entertaining creature also being practical, but gardeners and householders in Asia and Europe have kept waterfowl as a useful addition to the backyard menagerie for centuries, and for good reason. Duck hens bred for egg-laying ability can lay up to 350 eggs a year, each of which will weigh 20% to 35% more than a chicken egg. Furthermore, they will produce longer than a chicken, well into a fifth or even sixth season, long after chicken hens are ready for soup. And if you're worried about whether those eggs will taste weird or not work in your recipes, never fear. Ducks fed a healthy balance of layer pellets and forage will produce an egg that tastes similar to a fresh chicken egg and provides better loft in baked goods. As if their productivity weren't impressive enough, these little guys act as efficient exterminators, gathering much of their own food as they work. They ate adult beetles and grub the larva out of the lawn. And easy. Ducks are hardier than chickens, both as babies and as adults. Thanks to their larger size and the fact that they naturally run a feverishly high temperature, they are resistant to most diseases. When fully feathered, ducks are practically weatherproof. Their waterproof down coats keep them warm and dry, and happy, in even the worst of weather. On wet, dreary days, your ducks will make you smile with their cheerful, puddle-splashing antics. They do fine in hot weather, too, as long as they have access to shade and bathing water. But can be challenging. Though charming, ducks are also, in a word, filthy. They muck up their pens, they muck up their water, and they dig mud puddles anywhere moisture accumulates, like the condensation outlet from your air conditioner that you never knew existed until it became a large, putrid, mosquito-infested, muddy duck habitat. Somehow, through the magic of oiled feathers and frequent bathing, they come out looking like divas, but you almost assuredly won't. Invest in good muck boots and excellent drainage. Additionally, they don't like to be cooped up, they sleep on the ground, and they can be pretty loud. While chickens will put themselves to bed in their co-op at night, free-ranging ducks often have to be herded or bribed into a safe enclosure. Then, while a chicken will roost safely off the ground, a duck is likely to sleep on the ground next to the fence, where a clever raccoon can reach through for a tasty meal. Even waterfowl require care. Ducklings can be raised in a plastic tub with a heat lamp at one end. They don't require as much heat as chicks and will let you know if they are too hot or too cold. They need water-absorbent bedding, such as wood chips or straw, that has changed at least daily. They can be started on unmedicated chick feed, but require extra niacin. Karina flock raiser is a good duckling option, but not all feeds that say duckling on the label are adequate. To ensure enough niacin, you can mix any good quality, unmedicated chick starter 50-50 with game bird starter, or simply add pharmacy grade niacin to the drinking water. As a rule of thumb, dissolve one 100 milligrams niacin tablet per gallon in the waterer. Adult ducks don't need any special supplementation and can be fed chicken layer pellets. Plentiful natural forage and green foods from the kitchen round out a healthful diet. Provide free choice grit to aid with digestion. Predator protection for ducks is similar to that for chickens. However, ducks prefer to sleep outside, and if you're going to provide them that luxury, you must cover the bottom two feet of their outdoor enclosure with solid material or one half inch hardware wire mesh. Additional wire over and under the pen wards off climbing, flying and burrowing predators. For shelter, Choose a structure that is draft-free but well-ventilated. If you live in a mild winter area, USDA Zone 5 or higher, for instance, your ducks will thrive with a simple doghouse or even just a straw bale windbreak. For bitter winters, offer a cozy insulated space or a heated barn. To manage your flock's addiction to muck, you need to provide good drainage. Start with good stock. If you have been charmed by ducks despite their slovenly ways, Choose a breed and a line that matches your goals. Consider whether you're interested primarily in eggs, meat, pest control or decoration, and whether mothering ability is important. Holder Ed cautions against choosing stock based exclusively on breed. He says a breed's best qualities can quickly be lost through poor selection. Instead, 
Choose birds from a reputable breeder with stock bred specifically for the purpose, or purposes, you have in mind. Once you've found a breeder or two you like, you may want to start with a small assortment of suitable breeds and see which one wins your heart. Ducks can be profitable. Duck eggs are a specialty product well-loved among bakers and chefs who prize them for their superior loft and rich flavor. Depending on location and your willingness to invest in marketing, you may receive as little as $1.50 for a dozen eggs or as much as $12, or more. Asian markets, farmers markets and chefs can be good outlets for eggs. Eggs sold for hatching purposes bring the highest retail prices, and potential markets include sites like eggbid.com or the auction forum at backyardchicken.com. Duck meat can be grown and sold for a seasonal market, or simply produced for family use from extra drakes in your flock. Just remember to check your state and local ordinances to ensure compliance with health requirements. Equipped with an inexpensive incubator and a group of high-quality, productive fowl, you can also make a small profit selling ducklings. Hatching is addictive fun, and the $5 to $6 per baby easily offsets the cost of feed for several months. Though people may complain about guinea fowl being loud, there are many advantages of keeping guinea fowl on your property. Guinea fowl have an almost prehistoric appearance when they are compared to chickens and other types of fowl. Their plumage is spattered with black and white feathers on their bodies. And depending on the breed of the guinea, the face and neck feathers that they have are generally shiny and entirely black. They have red eyes that look rather fierce as well. The helmeted guinea fowl looks the most prehistoric of all because it has a horn on top of a patch of red skin that looks just like a helmet sitting on its head. There is also a guinea that looks very similar to a vulture too. The unique attributes of this type of fowl make them an interesting addition to a farm, but their looks aren't why most people keep them. Read on for several benefits of having a flock of guineas. Although some people are against the idea of raising guinea fowls because of their reputation for being loud, there are many advantages that may outshine the disadvantages. Benefits of keeping guinea fowl. 1. Pest control. Guineas originate from Africa where they spend their days with rhinos who don't mind their presence at all. They pick ticks and other bugs off the rhino's thick skin that they can't reach themselves. And in return, the rhinos offer them protection from predators that could eat them. On a farm, they continue this behavior by eating bugs off of the ground. Some people have said that they have seen them do the same thing to farm animals too. These fowl also catch and eat small snakes and other vermin, such as rats and mice. Another positive benefit of them scavenging for pests as a food source is that they get about 90% of their meals this way, so it costs less to feed them than other fowl who depend on grains for food. 2. Source of food. Since guineas are not as protective of their eggs as chickens are, collecting them in the morning as a food source is fairly easy. The eggs are smaller than a chicken's egg and they also have a richer flavor. The guineas themselves are a food source too. Most people find that their meat is a little drier and leaner, so it tastes best when it is paired with foods that offer moisture to it. Guinea meat is lower in fat and calories, which makes it a heart-healthy choice of protein. 3. Easy to multiply. Guineas produce about the same amount of eggs that a chicken does, and their gestation period is only one week longer. This means you can multiply them almost as fast as chickens if you want to. In as little as one month, a brood of tiny guineas will hatch. However, Guinea mothers often forget about the eggs that they lay. They sit on them infrequently or abandon them completely to lay a new set of eggs somewhere else. So if you want to have a larger flock of this fowl, you might have to help care for the eggs by putting them in an incubator as soon as they are laid. It is mostly younger guinea mothers that struggle the most in caring for their young this way. 4. Friends to other animals. For the most part, guinea fowl get along well with other animals if they are raised with them. This includes other types of fowl. However, if a rooster from a flock of chickens should happen to harass them during a season of mating, they will not fail to attack. So it is important to keep roosters away from guineas during this time. 5. Protection. It is difficult to sneak past a guinea without it alerting the other members of its flock with its loud call. They have been known to gang up on predators that are attempting to attack one of them, so this helps to protect other animals on the property from being injured by a fox or weasel. Together, the fowl act as an alarm system for a property. In the wild, other animals listen for them as a sound off to potential predators who are nearby, and humans have learned to do the same thing. 
For guinea to be used the most effectively in this way, a flock of more than six of them must be kept, and they cannot be caged up. Guineas are the happiest and the healthiest when they are allowed to roam freely. If a person should try to raise only one of them, it will usually die even if it is kept with other types of fowl. Though, it should be noted that guineas are infamous for roaming past the area they are supposed to stay in. To prevent this from occurring, it helps to have a fenced-in place for them with a small co-op for shelter from the elements. This makes guineas unsuitable for people living in urban areas. 6. Fertilizer When guinea fowl are allowed to roam about and eat insects at their leisure, they produce rich droppings as they go that fertilize areas of soil. Their droppings from barns or henhouses that they are kept in can also be collected for gardens for this purpose. Or they can be thrown directly into a compost pile. 7. Weed control. Unlike chickens who are constantly getting into gardens and causing trouble, guinea fowl generally leave most planted areas alone. However, they do pack at weeds that they find since they like a little vegetation in their diet. If they are kept in a fenced-in yard, they will keep it free from nuisance dandelions or ragweed. Just be sure to put fences a little bit wider than the extra garden plots, so vegetation won't be accessible to them. Occasionally, they will mistake small seedlings for weeds. As you can see, guinea fowl are an excellent addition to a farm for many reasons. They offer protection from intruders, and they make a great source of food for your family. Guineas also help tend to the ground and keep pests away. Just be sure to keep a large flock of them. They get lonely by themselves. Since this type of fowl originates from Africa, they are more acclimated to warmer weather. If you live in a cold region, be sure to give them a heated shelter where they can stay warm and dry. They also need a source of fresh, clean water daily, and though they get most of their food from foraging, this is difficult to do during the winter season when many pests hibernate, so be prepared to offer more grains during this time of the year. Do you want to add lovebirds to your existing flock? These popular birds with minuscule size and striking coloration are among the top favorite parrot species for over 100 years. But don't be deceived by their colorful plumage and amiable demeanor. If you're looking to purchase lovebirds, Know that behind their glitz and glamour are ugly sides and gray areas you should consider first. Scientific name. Agapornis. Size. 5 to 6 and a half inches. Weight. 1 one half to 2 ounces. Wingspan. 9 and a half inches. Lifespan. 20 years. Speech abilities. Poor. Can't talk nor mimic words. Meet the lovebirds. Lovebirds are popular tiny birds with a size ranging from 5 inches to just over 6 and a half inches. They belong to the genus Agapornis and are one of the smallest parrot species. These birds feature colorful plumage with short, blunt tail feathers and a stockier build compared to parakeets. Why are lovebirds called lovebirds? The name means birds that love each other, and it's fitting because these creatures have a strong pair bond. It starts with a courtship ritual where the male expresses his love by pecking. Then, a pair of male and female is formed and they will be linked for life. Types of lovebirds. Lovebird parrots can be divided into two groups. The first group features prominent eye rings including The masked yellow collared, A. personatus The fishers, A. fishera The black cheeked, A. nigrogenus The nyasa, or lilians, A. lilianae on the contrary, the second group doesn't have eye rings and they are the Peach-faced, or rosy-faced, a rosicollis Black-winged, or Abyssinian, a Taranta Red-headed, or red-faced, a Polarius Madagascar, or gray-headed, a Canis And black-collared, or Swindern's, a Swindernianus, lovebird Lovebird origin and natural habitat most lovebirds originate from sub-Saharan Africa except Madagascar or gray-headed lovebird, which as its name implies is native to Madagascar Island. They usually nestle in forests and savannas. In South Africa, fossils of ancient lovebird species that date back as far as 1.9 million years have been discovered. But if you live in Southwest America, San Francisco, and African cities, you may witness these birds at your backyard bird feeder. Feral Populations Perhaps flocks that escaped from an aviary or are the remains of one that was abandoned, live in these places. Lovebirds are cavity dwellers, so they prefer to live in holes in trees, rocks, or shrubs in the wild. 
Some species pair off to construct their nests independently of the flock, while others choose to nest in groups. They may use anything in an urban area, from a tree to a crevice in a wall. Peach-faced lovebirds, on the other hand, frequently reside among cacti in Phoenix, Arizona. Lovebird personality and temperament. These birds may be small but don't underestimate the power of lovebirds. They're bold, curious but easygoing. They're also affectionate and intelligent like larger parrots. Can I keep a single lovebird? Contrary to the purported myth, bird owners can keep a single lovebird. In fact, if you want to have a strong bond with your bird, you must keep one alone if you want it to focus on you rather than its pair. Can a single lovebird survive? Yes, a single lovebird can survive but it needs plenty of social interaction and stimulation with its humans. They also need lots of toys to keep them occupied. Are you wondering if backyard chickens are right for you? These funny, feathery friends are popular among hobby farmers and regular homeowners. After all, who doesn't love easy access to their own farm fresh eggs? The food isn't the only benefit, either. Like any animal, raising chickens can be a satisfying and rewarding experience. You can turn your small flock into a small business by selling excess eggs for profit. Keeping these birds as curious and entertaining pets can make your household more interesting. Chicken owners also reap the benefits of a greener, healthier lifestyle. Is the cost and effort of keeping chickens worth it to you? Find out with this list of 7 incredible benefits of raising chickens. Low maintenance, high reward. Chickens are frequently the preferred choice for novice farmers and livestock owners and for a compelling reason. These robust creatures are notably self-sufficient and demonstrate a strong level of adaptability. Once the initial setup of their living space, which includes the coop, feeders, and waterers, has been established, their upkeep becomes relatively straightforward. This primarily involves ensuring the cleanliness of the coop and vigilance for signs of illness or potential predators. Additionally, providing ample space for your flock is important, as overcrowding can induce conflict among the chickens. A secure run, or outdoor area, is also crucial for the chicken's well-being. Alongside the necessary living space, chickens also require mental stimulation to ward off ennui, which could incite disputes within the flock. Fulfilling these needs can be as uncomplicated as setting up a chicken swing, suspending a head of cabbage from a string, or scattering stumps or other perchable objects throughout their run. These elements not only offer entertainment but also encourage natural behaviors. Contrary to many other types of livestock, raising chickens is a relatively low-maintenance responsibility. It brings numerous benefits, including fresh eggs, natural pest control, and valuable organic fertilizer in the form of chicken manure. Therefore, chickens present an excellent starting point for those venturing into farming or livestock ownership, providing a rewarding, practical, and manageable experience. Eggs and other products. One of the most well-known benefits of raising backyard chickens is, of course, the eggs. Farm fresh eggs are better than anything you can find at the grocery store. You don't have to worry about excessive shelf life or what happens to the eggs during processing or shipping. You also know exactly how the chickens live and what they eat, which means you don't have to worry about unethical farm practices or unhealthy additives. Furthermore, fresh eggs are richer in color and flavor. They also contain fewer saturated fats and bad cholesterol compared to store-bought eggs. However, free-range eggs aren't the only product you can get when you raise chickens in your backyard. You can also purchase a chicken plucker for sale and raise chickens for their meat. Like fresh eggs, meat from your backyard chickens is safer and healthier than what you might buy in the store. Plus, you control what your chickens eat and how they live which means you can stock up on chicken without having to purchase from unhealthy or unethical factory farms. In addition to meat and eggs, many chicken keepers sell feathers or fertilizer from their chickens. You can also sell chickens themselves to other willing farmers. Backyard Entertainment Chickens can also liven up your backyard. A cute coop and a curious flock can create hours of entertainment for your whole family. Chickens are fascinating birds who enjoy exploring and playing much like we do. Step outside with your morning coffee and watch them peck around for a morning snack of bugs and seeds. Hang out in the afternoon while your birds hop around their roosts, play on a chicken swing, or mess around with any toys you place in the coop or run. Even normal behaviors and instincts, such as establishing and maintaining the pecking order, are fascinating to watch. 
Their gentle clucking sounds and amusing behaviors can have a calming effect on people. Observing and interacting with chickens can be a therapeutic experience, allowing individuals to unwind and connect with nature. Many chicken keepers find solace in spending time with their feathered friends, whether simply watching them explore the yard or engaging in gentle interactions such as hand feeding or petting. This bond can bring joy and tranquility into daily life. Gardening Perks Maintaining a garden in your own backyard near your chicken's range or run comes with many benefits, courtesy of your backyard co-op. The presence of backyard chickens in a garden can significantly enhance its productivity and health. Chickens are nature's pest control experts. Their curious exploration of the yard leads them to devour various pests, such as grasshoppers, snails, and other small creatures that can cause substantial damage to your garden. This extends to mosquitoes and ticks, which they gladly feast upon, making your backyard a more enjoyable and safer environment, especially during the warmer months. Their benefits extend beyond pest control. Chickens are also great assistants in controlling weed growth in and around your garden. As your flock ventures through their territory, their natural scratching and pecking behaviors dig up and disperse weed seeds. They then consume these seeds, serving as a delicious snack for them and a boon for your garden. This ensures your favored fruits and vegetables have a flourishing environment for growth. Moreover, chickens can contribute to the aesthetics of your garden by creating a rustic and natural look. Their routine scratching and pecking activities aerate the soil, helping to loosen it and encourage better plant root development. This gentle landscaping can naturally enhance the appearance and fertility of your garden. Consequently, having chickens roaming in your backyard delivers a winning combination of efficient pest control, weed management, and light landscaping, all contributing to a thriving garden environment. Positive Environmental Impact Keeping chickens in your backyard can have positive environmental implications. Raising your chickens for eggs reduces your reliance on commercial egg production, which often involves large-scale factory farming methods with significant environmental consequences. Backyard chickens offer a more sustainable alternative, allowing you to impact your food supply chain directly. Furthermore, backyard chickens contribute to a reduction in the exploitation of resources needed for commercial egg production. Industrial-scale farms often rely heavily on electricity for lighting and temperature control, water for sanitation, and feed which often has its own environmental impact. By contrast, backyard chickens require far less of these inputs. Moreover, having your own chickens fosters a more localized and self-reliant environment. It helps create a community less dependent on complex, distant supply chains for their food. This self-sufficiency not only enhances local resilience but it also encourages the understanding and appreciation of where our food comes from. By opting for backyard chickens, you contribute to a more environmentally friendly food system by reducing carbon footprints associated with transportation, decreasing the use of resources required for commercial egg production, and promoting a more localized and self-sufficient environment. Fertilizer Production Raising chickens offers a multitude of benefits, one of which is the invaluable byproduct they yield, their manure. Known for its nutrient-rich composition, chicken manure stands as a potent source of organic fertilizer. Packed with vital elements such as nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, it plays a significant role in fostering robust plant growth. Chicken manure can significantly enhance soil fertility when processed correctly through composting or applied directly. It does this by incrementally elevating nutrient content, thus enriching the soil and promoting your plant's overall health and vitality. Over time, this leads to thriving, vibrant plant life that contributes to an eco-friendly garden. Moreover, using chicken manure as an organic fertilizer is a sustainable method to feed your soil. This approach not only replenishes necessary nutrients in your garden but also decreases dependence on synthetic fertilizers. The latter, while effective, can sometimes lead to long-term detrimental effects on the soil's natural balance. As such, choosing chicken manure stands as an environmentally responsible, cost-effective choice for maintaining your garden's overall productivity. Conservational of Heritage Breeds By raising chickens, you can contribute to conserving rare and endangered heritage breeds. Many traditional chicken breeds are at risk of extinction due to the dominance of commercial breeds in large-scale farming. By keeping and breeding heritage breeds, you help preserve genetic diversity and maintain the unique traits and characteristics of these breeds. 
It's a way to safeguard the cultural and historical heritage associated with these chickens while promoting biodiversity in the poultry world. Moreover, chickens can add a charming and picturesque element to your backyard or homestead. They come in various breeds with unique appearances, feather colors, and patterns. Some are even for ornamental purposes. The sight of a flock of chickens freely roaming and pecking in a grassy yard or garden can enhance the aesthetics of your property. Bottom line. People start raising chickens for many reasons, but they all experience these incredible benefits.